you could be called Fisher Z. In Britain, people were a bit sceptical. I was, well, I was seen as a bit academic. I don't play it as a sacred experience. You had to be politically sloganeer. I was interested in um, world and European politics rather than just specific British ones. I was just imagining a London going up with a nuclear explosion and me sitting having ice cream on Pre in Preston Park. It can be called toilet brush if you want. <laughs>
Steve Steve's leaving was a was more political than anything else. Um, it made from then on it wasn't a band in the same way as it had been before. Obviously, Steve and Dave, who'd been with it from the beginning, were the band, and we had extra musicians to cover stuff. Um, it was, I mean, I was always told by some very eminent managers that I might be called, the band might be called Fisher Z and I might be Watsy, but the fact is I'm not a natural band person. I'm more of a, you know, a bloke and his band, like um, Costello and the Attractions or something like that. And I, the reason I kept changing names of projects was that, because I felt it should be different if I was doing something different. Um, but ba but basically, no, I mean, that was it was very much like doing it wasn't a solo record, but it was done very fast. I knew exactly what I wanted. We recorded it in about seven days, all everything we because we, we did the rhythm section stuff. I'd written it. I mean, the, the others were saying like they were saying, here, have you record? Have you written anything? What's I said, yeah, sure. We weren't great rehearsers. We went into uh, we went into um, the manor, into um, uh, old Branson's gaff and to record and it was really in the winter the mistake we'd made we had lovely but naive management who dragged us back from america when we were being successful and what you had to do was stay there we came back again pulled back because i thought oh now nah, why we came but we were recording and so we what we did was the rhythm tracks in about two and a half days then i did guitar guitar keyboards vocal guitar guitar keyboards vocal and it was just that's why it's such a complete record and I just want, it, just want to go through the album tracks because you've sure. got Berlin, Marlies, Red Skies Over Paradise. In England, You'll Never Find Brian Here, Battalions yeah. of Strangers, Song and Dance yeah. Brigade, The Writer, Bathroom Scenario, Risk Cutters Lullaby, Cruise Missiles, Luton to Lisbon, Multinationals, Bite. Now, yeah. I would imagine that most of those tracks you have played over the years, <laughs> you know, live. When I did my first Fisher's Ed solo tour in Germany last year, what I learned from that was I played all the tracks, but I played them in a different order because for a set, they need to be done in a different way. You also can spread them. The show's a long show. It's a two hour show. So I can spread the tracks out amidst other things. I don't play it as a sacred experience. Um, it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be in that order. But you, you, no, the answer is six of those songs have never been played live because remember the band after that i left it it just drove me nuts because it, there was it was too big it was against the principles that i that, that i had i'd lost i think losing steve meant that 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 also had a big effect on me it was different and i went off like lightning like i always do and did a solo thing within four months emi stiffed it because they wanted me to make a new fisher's ed record all those politics we all know about but essentially uh, many of the songs they're a bit nobody's ever heard them all played and that's what makes it interesting so is this a bit like it's it's almost like just coming full circle for you in a, yes. in a sense as well. Yeah. So what, yeah. what sort of feelings does that evoke? Well, I thought, obviously, having been very successful as a young man and stepping away from that and, and finding out later in life that was a bit dim. <laughs> because the main thing of an artist is not money. It's if you write, whatever you do, it, you're creating a unique view of the world and you want people to see it. And one one thing, I only thing I regret is that more of my work and the band's work would um, has not had as many people listen to it. I don't mean, don't care about buying it, but listen to it. The funny thing is, I have discovered, which is answering your question, by going back to like all the tracks in Red Skies, I never felt I could ever play them all. And you you can't keep getting new bands to learn every album and play everything. What I've done is gone back to the. I think this is relevant to your question. I've gone back to the catalog. I've got 360 songs on major records and I'm very proud of them. Whereas I used to feel looking back, oh God, I've never compromised the music, but how dim can you get on the business front? Suddenly it's looking good. We're, for instance, by looking at the catalog, you just, I really understand the essence of all the writing that I've done. The political, specifically with Red Skies, the personal and the more psychological, which you get on the first Fisher's Ed record on word salad, because word salad, as you probably know, is a term used in mental hospitals for disengaged conversations. And it's been, go to go back to it, to answer you, it's been an amazing learning experience about myself. Um, we have new material, which I'll get to you first, Steve, by the way, coming throughout the year from the summer onwards, which we've held back. Because what I've been doing, doing this tour, doing the Red Skies thing, is reinforcing for me and the public the brand, if you like, the essence of Fisher Z. And also the essence, if you've got one man on his own, you have got the essence because um, 
Um, it's just I'm not saying I can't play it like the band band. I don't try to play them in a band way, but that's the I've been recovering the essence of Fisher said first to go forward. And I then have coming up, which will probably be in about three years time, a massive idea of a retrospective. It's like doing an art, a world retrospective of stuff with some new stuff, too. And what my son, when he managed me, taught me, he said, look, your new work is one brick in a massive wall. He said, don't ignore the wall. He said, it's, no, it's not negative to, you know, I've done probably as many records as any, but probably done as many as Robert Smith. I've probably done as many as Nick Cave. Yeah, I think so. But I've called them all different things, which makes them different to find. I'm Fisher's Ed. That's what I am. I'm Fisher's Ed. In, if, they, if all you want to do for the public is they know if it's a solo show, it'll say Fisher's Ed solo. But records I release with other people, whatever I do, I, I'm if I if if I was born now with a, a new artist now, you could be called Fisher Z, quite happily because you can it's abstract. You can be called Toilet Brush if you want. It's fine. It's really interesting. You talk about looking at your back catalogue in mm. and seeing you know the body of work that you've achieved and actually seeing that slightly differently. I mean, I'm going to compare it to something. I when I wrote a biography, it actually made me make peace with me not being particularly happy about some things in my past but actually getting yeah. them out there changed me completely and allowed me to do things like this because it allowed yeah. me to go back and not feel like oh that's something that I can't possibly ever do again it actually sort of allowed me just to enjoy it which is I can really thing. identify with that yeah so it did yeah. that to you as yeah, well definitely definitely also the idea that because obviously when i went back to the catalog you're thinking oh there's 350 which which of those do i still identify with and i thought maybe i'd get 50 or 60 there are 125 that i can really identify with and the chart and what i'm trying to get people to do in the shows because i don't know I, um obviously what who, who whether a lot of people see this which i really appreciate you invited me on but the idea what i'm going to do is i will be playing um, obviously featuring the Red Sky stuff, featuring the other hits that I can play and know. But also there will be a section where people can basically choose what they want, which is very unusual. I, I won't know what I'm going to do beforehand. In my, I obviously have um, a word, uh, what's the name, an auto cue, because I couldn't learn. The difficulty is if you're playing, if you're just singing, I can learn the words for lots of things. If I'm just playing guitar, I can learn the chords. But it's so therefore I I should be able to if people it won't just be a shout out. I'll probably use a clapping system or something so people can actually choose that night. Those people there'll be if you imagine the shows in four quarters, I'll spread the I'll spread half of it will be Red Skies spread out of it in some order probably the more probably the more um it'll probably be the more obscure red skies songs mixed up with famous stuff in the first half of the show because in theaters it's it's in halves in the stand-up shows i might go straight through in the third quarter that'll be the, re the request see bit and i will have at the moment because i'm trying to do the ones i really really like i've got obviously the, my normal set of stuff plus Red Skies, say that's 25, no more. So that's 30 songs. They're already known. I've done them a lot. The next echelon is another 30, which I can play well. And I've actually rehearsed. I'm not a great rehearser, but I'm rehearsing. So that makes 60. And there are another 30, which if I really pushed, I can have a go at with the auto cue. And if I, 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 I'm a person who does half a song if I only know half of it. And I explain that in a, and people I've really I've been amazed people don't mind that at all. But having I think I probably told you before, I have in my background, um, there's pre-war music hall entertainers and there's a bit of the entertainer there for me, which enables me to do that. And you see from my work, there's dark humor in most of the things that I do. Even, even when you, you we just talked about the title track of Red Skies of a Paradise, that's got a very dark you know, the idea of ice, ice cream and, nucle and nuclear fission is a funny combination. Yeah, it's also, you know, essentially very current. I mean, when I was at your show, I noticed that that connection that you have, a very personal connection to your audience and a very loyal audience. I mean, you have a core of, of fans who hmm. have been with you for a long time and they obviously connect to you as a person. They connect to you politically hmm. um, and musically. So yeah. what do you what do you feel that you're that you give your fans that allows them to sort of stay with you? Well, they never know. They they know the core of what's going on um, and they know that that's solid. 
that is part of their lives. Red Skies for a German audience is I'm proud now. I was worried about it before because I just thought that's what I did and that's it. Um, I mean, it's part of it's part it's entered somewhere into German culture at that time. I mean, for instance, songs being used. There was that TV program, wasn't there? Deutschland 83 or whatever. Yeah. Berlin was being used on the soundtrack. Um, one thing I will be. Yeah. I mean. I can't remember what the question is. I, I, sorry, I babbled about, over it. What about your choral fans and why you oh, think yeah. they stay with you. Well, they do because they, they get, they, there's things they know they get. Um, I think, I hope, I don't perform them exactly the same as I did. Um, as a solo performer, do you mean, well, both band and solo? There's the difference. With All the right. band, they're going to see, um, basically now, the band play mostly the um, stuff from the first three albums and other stuff, other, you know, famous things that have ticked over. The funny, um, but they also, but and with with me, I can do more things, obviously, because I can put, you know, obviously there's a more, more variety. But what I do solo-wise is very different from anybody else. I mean, you're talking about having electric. Did you see the solo or the band show? I saw the band show. Yeah, okay. Well, I really love you to see. I don't know if you're, you're available with the, for the bonds are nearest to you, isn't it? Yeah, if you make it, I would be delighted. I'd be honoured because that is a very different show. I I am noisier than most bands when I play, and there's a big variety of stuff. So I think it's the energy and enthusiasm people like. Um, also, what is gratifying is we have those fans that are the same age as me that have been going at it for years. But we also, you probably would have noticed, we also have a, a really good. We have a. I don't know where they come from. So it's not like the, the children of the fans, but we, because I'm part in Germany and also in Holland and Belgium, of their kind of culture, they pick up on it. And we have a we have a really good um, growing audience. I mean, most most of the audience now these days are younger than me. And that's not difficult. <laughs> yeah, younger than me as well. Um, <laughs> have you mellowed over the years? Because you mentioned a manager number eight, who was your son, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you've yeah. got manager number nine now. And yeah, well, you... Matt, poor, poor old Marion's is inherit. He's very, very good, by the way. But he's inherited it really, I think, because he's in the band with me, and he's just. But he's got a man with very with a lots of skills, and so it kind of works. I, um, I don't know. I don't think I've mellowed. I, my judgment is still very poor and very juvenile for lots of things. The work I'm always on on point with my creative work, but business decisions. I'm madly impatient. Um, the the good thing about the modern business is if you want to put something out tomorrow, you can. And I like that. Um, unlike many of my cynical and richer friends, they hate it. They don't understand the business. They don't understand the point. I mean, for instance, you can delay or put forward. With the what we've just done is we put out. We will have put out three or three, um, three of the of my live show solo show singles. Oh, three, just not, don't call them singles. Three tracks in the last over the last eight weeks. So you can put it up there. They're there if you want to. And on the up, and then on tour, people can buy the CDs. We do bespoke limited editions of things that are, that are live because it's funny. Live goes with live. And then you build to other things. I like formats. I mean, for instance, the new work that we do next year will be three separate EPs of limited numbers three months apart. And you finish up, and then you finish up with an album. So therefore you're elongating the time people can get interested in it. And so that's good. It's good. I mean, I'd, I would like to be in a situation where I'm completely financially secure um, and can just sit around a bit, but I've never done that. And it's, it's just not me. Well, I really <laughs> look forward to seeing you uh, in, in Bonn. I will come. I'm going to oh, find a track that is outside the 30, 30 and 30, outside this 90, uh, within the 350 to shout out. <laughs> okay, try it. My, my, I can use, as you know, there are many theatrical mechanisms where well, I can divert it, but I know what you. Oh, yes. Yeah, so, would you please clap for that one? Yes. And I'm clap for that one. Oh, I'm so much louder for that one. And I play the one I want to play. But no, I mean, it's going to be quite a trip for me because I'm relying on the auto cue for lots of stuff, which I wouldn't normally do. But I, I like the flying by the seat of the pants. The shows that I have, they're based on a spine of solidity. And around that, anything can happen. I've had quite serious personal, I mean, I've spit up recently with somebody that I love dearly. I just don't want to be on stage sniveling too much. <laughs> it's going to be difficult. It's hard. It's really hard. Seriously, I've had a big, 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 um, in literally in the last few weeks, massive. Oh, no, and it changes my connection with German. But, uh, yeah. 
Well, listen, I wish you much luck with the tour. There's still some tickets available. Yes, there are. You yeah. Go on the Fisher's Ed website. Absolutely, yeah. And, I mean, uh, mm, absolutely. Which is where people can find them. And, um, yeah, I look forward to seeing you, and I'm going to come mm. up and say hello after the Please game. do this time and have a drink. The thing about the solo shows that's so gratifying is the numbers. I'm very, very grateful for the numbers turning up for the solo shows. It's surprising. There's places, again, for instance, I play places that other English and American bands won't play because they can't get the same money in the point. I'm insisted with my pr um, promoters, I'm playing Leipzig. And you can't not play Leipzig. They said, well, no, nah, no, nah, it's harder to get people. I said, no, I'm, play I'm playing Leipzig. So places like that, I mean, I'm going to get far less people, but it's but it's very, very important to take your work around. If I, uh, for you, I'll tell you a little bit about it when I see you. I, I have a plan because um, my one thing, obviously, for me is reflected back work in the English speaking world is hard for me, considering I'm a writer and I write in English. But I have a, an extremely cunning plan that's taking two and a half years and a lot of traveling to plan to do that. Brilliant. Which I can't, can't wait to hear about that. Process, which has been inspired by the process you talked about as you look back at your work. I've looked, I think, hang on a minute, I've got a catalog here. I want to show that catalog. I want to show its relevance to the world. And I want to back and that involves involving other people and the story of the songs is one thing my story is quite an odd one like a bloke who's really pretty good who's a, seems to have actively sabotaged a potentially very successful career on a number of occasions that's that's documentary material in my view it's a but, network <laughs> it's a netflix series i think <laughs> it certainly is and also staying alive is a good idea compared <laughs> with our contemporaries that's it and let's hope there's no sort of missiles coming at you as well <laughs> no no we can't have that I mean, I speak Russian and I have on some of the YouTube, you know, people will film a live show and thousands of people will see it. And I've made an introduction to do with something to do with Putin and his horse. And so you have to be careful like that. I have to be careful where I go. Brilliant. <laughs> OK, John, thanks very much. It's lovely to see you. you. And I will see you in Bonn. Yeah. Absolutely. And we'll talk again afterwards someday. OK, John. Lovely. I Thank hope you. so. Bye bye. bye. <laughs>